Hello, Michael here with another Redshift tutorial. Today we're gonna be having a look at caustics and how you set them up in Maya. So this is really simple. Um, and just before I dive into it, basically what caustics are is where light refracts through a transparent object um, and converges on a point. Um, and I'll show an image here to give you an example of what that is. So a common way to see it would be with a glass or a glass of water. Um, so we're gonna do that and um, so you know, uh, caustics aren't on enabled by default. So um, that's why we have to set up a few things to get them to go. So you see I've got some geometry here in a plane which is um, on a layer that I can't uh, select. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna need to do is uh, assign a shader to these um, circle-y type deals. So uh, I'm just gonna bring up the hype shade editor, bring it into the scene. Uh, we're gonna create a redshift shader material. Um, and I'm just going to select all of our objects, one, two, three, and then right click on the material two and assign to uh, viewport object. Then we're going to go into the basic properties, go to presets, I'm going to change that to glass. This will also work with water or plastic or anything that's transparent. All right, so that is now assigned. We need to get a light in the scene. So we're just going to go up to redshift, uh, lights and physical light, and we're going to position that. All right, cool, so now that we've got the light in the scene, I'll just do a quick render for reference so you can have a look. All right, so as you can see, just in IPR mode, um, the light is being transmitted through the objects, but we're not gonna, we're not seeing any real caustic effect. Um, you'd notice it mostly around the edges of the highlighted area. Uh, that's because the, the, the way the light's refracting through that, those um, sides are essentially closer together. Um, so that's no good and uh, we want to get that going. So the first thing we want to change is the light itself. So select your light, scroll down to photon and you want to enable uh, emit caustic photons. Uh, this in itself isn't enough though. We need to also go up to our render settings and we're going to go over to GI and we're going to change two things. Um, your primary GI engine, you probably still want to have it brute force for most things because it handles um, diffuse GI better. But for your secondary GI engine, uh, photon map is what you're going to want. So caustics will work. Um, and you can combine the photon map with any of the other GI engines. But um, yeah, generally I use brute force for just diffuse because it looks good. So um, that as it is, still it won't be good enough. So what we need to do now is select our object um, and then in the attribute editor, go down to redshift, scroll down until you get to visibility, enable visibility and scroll down some more and you'll see global illumination. You wanna go down and uh, select cast course, uh, casts caustic photons. And if we rendered this as an IPR now, it won't work still um, because caustics don't render in IPR mode they only render in um, final mode so uh, I'll run a final render now just so you can have a look at what that looks like okay so you can see uh, with the center one where I've enabled caustics it's emitting caustic photons um, and the two side ones it is not because I haven't enabled it on those ones I'm sorry about my mouse by the way this is the thing with redshift if you um, start a final render with an IPR rendering it does this I think it's a bug um, so we're just going to roll with this actually I'm going to save this and restart my one second. All right, we're back and the mouse is fixed. So um, you can see that the caustics are working. However, we are getting this weird wavy sort of thing happening at the edge of it. And obviously a lot of noise behind it. That's just because we're rendering at a low sample rate. Um, this is very easily fixed. So if we jump into our render settings and we go to the photon tab, um, basically you just want to increase the caustic search radius. So if we increase that to say point, six and we'll run another render you see that started to clean it up so maybe 0.8 is where we want it yeah so that's pretty much done and i'll just zoom in a bit so we can see that so what we're looking for with this sort of shape is a sort of highlighted halo effect and then sort of a still a brighter illumination in the center which is essentially what we're getting from this glass object and you'll see the two outside ones are still not emitting caustic uh, caustic photons so i'll enable those so you can see the difference in um, shapes that the are uh, transmi uh, transmitted through those 
objects. All right, so now you can see that with the core sticks on either on all of the objects, we're getting that coming through. Um, and if you just wanted to further clean up your render, if you're doing something like this, you can go to your GI tab and then we can just increase the number of rays to something like 64. Also, if we wanted to um, make the core sticks slightly more ob obvious, we can make our light source a bit smaller and maybe increase its intensity to something like 215, run a render. So now we can see the um, transition between the highlighted outside and the center a little bit easier. Um, and I could probably do to have slightly more um, caustic search radius. Yeah, and increase that light to like 500. Yeah, much better, much cleaner. Um, so you don't want to increase the caustic search radius too much because say if I increase this to 10, just as an example, starts to lose its effect. It's obviously still emitting the caustic photons, but um, however, it's sort of sharpening up the edges and it's making it look less realistic. So you wanna find a nice balance point. Also, this may increase your render time as well, so be aware of that. So use caustics where, only where you need to. If you can get away with not having them on a specific object, then maybe just don't have them um, if you don't think the audience will notice. However, that is pretty much all there is to it. Um, I don't think I've missed anything here, but if I have, just uh, leave a comment with your question and I shall endeavor to answer it. Um, also, if you liked the tutorial, make sure you click that like button so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you are subscribed as I'm doing a couple of tutorials a week uh, for all sorts of stuff, a lot of rendering stuff at the moment. So if that's what you're into, you're gonna be getting that. Um, so yeah, make sure you are subscribed if you wanna see that in your feed. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.